Good morning. In the name of Jesus Christ, welcome today to Central United Methodist Church where it is our mission to follow Jesus by loving God and loving our neighbors. I'm Thomas Smith, senior pastor here at Central, and it is a joy to have you with us today. Whether you are worshiping here in person with us in the sanctuary or whether you are worshiping online with us this morning, thank you for making Central a part of your day today. Uh, on your way in this morning, uh, I hope you received a couple of things. I hope you received an order of worship. Most if you don't have one, please go get one. This will guide us through our time together this morning. Also, on the way in, you may have noticed a stack of Bibles. If you don't have a Bible and you'd like one, or you know someone who needs a Bible, please take one. That's what they're there for. You may also notice a stack of our monthly newsletter. If you don't have one of those already, I encourage you to take one. And if you're worshiping with us online, I encourage you to visit our church website, centralmethodist.net. All of those are ways that you can find uh, avenues to connect with God through Central. And if you're new to Central or it's your first time with us, we are so especially glad that you are here. And if you haven't already, I encourage you to check in with one of our volunteers uh, in the Commons at the Welcome Center so that we might be able to help connect you or answer any questions you might have. So some things I would do want to highlight this morning is I think we all know yesterday was Veterans Day, and so we do take a moment to recognize uh, and thank those of us. Uh, I'm particularly proud of the central folks who have uh, served in our nation's military. Know that we appreciate you, and we thank you for what you've done. So please, if you know a veteran or two, say thank you to them today. Uh, also, um, Immediately following this worship service, uh, next door, across the street, I guess I should say, we will dedicate our beds building. That is a new building in the bus parking lot. What we'll do immediately following this service, we'll just go over there and cross the street, look both ways and cross the street, and uh, have a brief service of dedication there. Also, our Happy Travelers group is heading to Mepkin Abbey this coming Thursday down at Monk's Corner. And if you would like to be part of that group, please be in touch with Reverend Ann Kavan in the church office. Well, one of the things we're doing in, at Central now is each month we have a ministry spotlight where we highlight a different ministry area in our church and uh, we'll hear from those, one of the, our, I'm getting ahead of myself, we'll hear from our adult and family ministries uh, ministry later in the service. But right now we're going to have a word about our Stephen ministry from Reverend May. So we're so fortunate here at Central to have a vital, robust Stephen Ministry program. And we're at the point where it's time for us to grow once again. So for the first of the year, we're going to start with training Stephen Ministers. And if you have ever thought about this wonderful ministry, we're going to have an interest meeting next Sunday at 10 o'clock. Reverend Tom Piatla, Missy Brown, and I will be they are to answer any questions that we can ask, I mean answer and ask to, I guess. I would love for those of you that have been trained as a Stephen minister or a Stephen leader to please stand as you are able right now, at just where you're at. Stand up. I see a lot of you out there, so let's do this. So, and we've got a good many in the other service also. Nelda, I saw you. <laughs> We are very fortunate to have a lot of people that have been trained here at Central. There's always a need. So if you have any questions at all, please contact me or definitely plan to come to the meeting next Sunday, 10 o'clock. We'll meet in the Moody Parlor. Okay. Well, friends, as we gather now, let us be open to Christ's presence with us as we worship God together in spirit and in truth.
Let us bless the Lord at all times. The lives of God's servants are redeemed. Please be seated. I'll invite you to join me now in our colic, praying our colic in the Lord's Prayer as found in your bulletin. Almighty God, from whom we have received every good gift, let our souls enjoy their desire to be enkindled by your Spirit that, being filled as lamps by your divine presence, we may shine like blazing lights before your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who reigns with you in the Trinity forever. We now pray, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Welcome, welcome this morning to worship. It's so wonderful to have you here, to be together as we worship on this very big Sunday. We've got a lot going on. I want to invite all of you to participate in any way 
you feel called to participate in the ministries of the church, take a moment right now, if you will, and find that pew pad that's on the end of your pew. Go ahead and sign your name down. Put your name down and greet your neighbor, say hello. Hopefully you'll meet someone new or re renew an acquaintance with someone, get to know one another. We have so much to celebrate and we wanna make sure that you know that you're invited also into Christian discipleship. If you have questions and wanna to speak to one of the clergy, we're available at all times for you. And Thomas and I would love to sit down and talk with you. Give us a call and let's have a one-on-one -on -one conversation. Now I'm going to invite um, the adult and family ministry spotlight speaker, Elise, uh, to talk to us about adult and family ministries. Good morning, everyone. I'm Elise Walker. Can you hear me well? Um, I'm here today to tell you about the Adult and Family Ministries team. I hope you got a chance before you came in to see our slideshow in the Commons area, and we have donuts two weeks in a row now for, um, to celebrate the Adult and Family Ministry team. The focus of the Adult and Family Ministry team is to provide various opportunities for all central members to nurture and strengthen their relationships with each other. On the one hand, we as a team organize projects and activities which give you the opportunity to come together in community. Usually this involves gathering for a meal or, and a program. Wednesday night suppers are probably the best example of this effort. Almost every Wednesday night of the school year, we gather for a communal, communal meal and meaningful program. It takes loads of planning and execution to deliver this one night to you each week. If you haven't taken advantage of this opportunity, please give it a chance. We'd love to see you there. Some other projects the Adult and Family Ministries team undertake are Legacy, Sun Legacy Sundays, Heritage Sundays, our summer get-together, which last year was barbecue and bluegrass, but we also have Spirit of Central. Um, we do a college care program. We have two new programs, which have already been mentioned, this, one of which has already been mentioned this morning, the Happy Travelers going to Mepkin Abbey, and, um, and the Veterans Program which uh, veterans meet for breakfast every month. We're always looking for new projects and ideas that bring us together to nurture our relationships. On the other hand, we get involved in almost every project that requires um, a group gathering with food. <laughs> An example of this type include, might include a reception for incoming pastors or outgoing pastors um, or our Commitment Sunday, we're also involved in that. Now, I would be remiss if I, said, if I used we in a very loose context because it's really a very few people who work extremely hard to put those um, big activities together. And Adrienne Reynolds, our staff person, there she is way back in the back, <laughs> is, is instrumental. She, she basically does all the work organizing and getting it together, ordering food, etc. And then we have our hospitality team, which I'm sure all of you know work tirelessly every week to put together the Wednesday night meal. That's Barbara Holiday, Gail Only, I don't see Gail, or Betty Heinlein, and Carol Stone is our new person. And we all remember our wonderful Gloria Cauldron who entered the church triumphant this past year and we celebrated last All Saints Sunday just last week. So that's some of what we do. We're just involved in a lot of things, especially things that have to do with food. Um, and earlier this year, during the making the shift process, I learned that God designed us as social creatures. This is a quote from the Making the Shift Field Guide. The church is designed to provide a community of faith with whom we can work out our salvation. Being in relationship with other Christ followers whose goal is to be conformed to the image of Christ makes living the way of Jesus far more possible. The adult and family ministry team will continue its work to provide opportunities 
for you to be in community with each other. If you are interested to work on this team or have any questions, I'll, we'll be happy to answer them. Thank you very much. This morning we also have the opportunity to um, recognize two members of our church. Each year, the outreach ministry team uh, selects an adult and a teenager who exemplify uh, Central's missional outreach. And if there is a representative from the outreach ministry who wants to come forward at this time, I encourage you to do so. But um, we recognize an adult, as I say, and a teenager. And I'll tell you a little bit about these two people before I ask them to come forward. Um, the adult that I mentioned is one of those people that if Central is doing something where she makes her faith real through action, you'll find her there. Any, uh, to start to make the list of ways this woman is active, it would take too long, and I still want to preach a sermon later in this service at some point. But she serves in ways public and in many ways privately. Wherever there is a need, uh, wherever somebody needs a touch from God, she is willing to be God's hands and feet to make it real. The teenager we lift up today is um, one of those teenagers that if the church is doing something, if our church's youth ministry is doing something, she is there. She's terribly active in the missional at work of the church, especially with Santa Hatchie, that wonderful ministry we have there. And so at this time, I would ask Julia Sisko and Elena Gregory if they would please come forward. And I'm going, I know that this was probably embarrassing to y'all, but you got them. Oh, oh my goodness. But you have to come forward anyway. Yo, I didn't see Meg get these, and I'm like, these were there before worship. So Elena, please accept this on behalf of the church to thank you for all you do, and turn around and look at your brothers and sisters. And y'all clap for these things. Hold on, don't, don't, don't come back, come back, come back. <laughs> I want to pray over you. Lord God, we thank you for these two who stand before us and, and the work that they do to advance your kingdom in this community and in this world. And, oh, Lord, we pray that you work within Central and through Central, that you, we would all be about the work of your kingdom. We pray in Christ's name. Amen. All right, dear friends. And now I invite Luke and Katie Wilcox, if they would come forward with George to receive the sacrament of baptism. And I invite you in your seat to turn in your hymnals to page 39. We can move that too. Brothers and sisters in Christ, through the sacrament of baptism, we are initiated into Christ's holy church. We are incorporated into God's mighty acts of salvation and given new birth through water and the Spirit. All this is God's gift offered to us without price. This morning, I present George Luther Wilcox IV for baptism. Luke and Katie. Oh, I'm sorry. That's Meg. Go ahead. <laughs> Luke and Katie, on behalf of the whole church, I ask you, do you renounce the spiritual forces of wickedness, reject the evil powers of the world, and repent of your sin, it says so there. Do you accept the freedom and power God gives you to resist evil, injustice, and oppression in whatever forms they present themselves? Do you confess Jesus Christ as your Savior, put your whole trust in His grace, and promise to serve him as your Lord in union with the church which Christ has opened to peoples of all ages, nations, and races. Will you nurture George in Christ's holy church and that by your teaching and example he may be guided to accept God's grace for himself, to profess his faith openly, and to lead a Christian life. Do you, as Christ's body, the church, reaffirm both your rejection of sin and your commitment to Christ? Yes. 
We do. Will you nurture one another in Christian faith and life and include this child now before you in your care? With God's help, we will proclaim the good news and live according to the example of Christ. We will surround this child with a community of love and forgiveness that he may grow in his service to others. We will pray for him that he may be a true disciple who walks in the way that leads to life. Let us now join in professing the Christian faith as contained in the scriptures of the Old and New Testament. Please stand as you are able. Do you believe in God the Father? I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ? I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven, is seated at the right hand of the Father, and will come again to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Please be seated. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Eternal Father, when nothing existed but chaos, you swept across the dark waters and brought forth light. In the days of Noah, you saved those on the ark through water. After the flood, you set in the clouds a rainbow. When you saw your people as slaves in Egypt, you led them to freedom through the sea. Their children you brought through the Jordan to the land which you promised. Sing, Sing to, to the Lord, Lord all the earth. Tell of God's mercy each day. In the fullness of time you sent Jesus, nurtured in the water of a womb. He was baptized by John and anointed by your spirit. He called his disciples to share in the baptism of his death and resurrection and to make disciples of all nations. Declare, Declare his, his works to the nations. nations. His glory among all the people. Pour out your Holy Spirit to bless this gift of water and he who receives it, to wash away his sin and clothe him in righteousness throughout his life, that dying and being raised with Christ, he may share in his final victory. All, all praise, praise to you, eternal, eternal Father, through your Son, Jesus Christ, who, who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns forever. Amen. George Luther, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit work within you, that being born through water and the Spirit, you may be a faithful disciple of Jesus Christ. Amen. Now it's our joy to welcome our new brother in Christ. Through baptism, you are incorporated into God's new creation and made, made to share in Christ's royal priesthood. 
We are all one in Christ Jesus. With joy and thanksgiving, we welcome you as a member of the family of Christ. Well, friends, I invite you to turn in your hymnals to number 608, and you can remain seated as we sing, and I'm going to walk around and introduce you to George. <laughs> Friends, we have a couple of mementos of the day for you. We have a, a candle that was lit from the altar candle today. It symbolizes the light of Christ that shines within, within George. We have a certificate of his baptism that we give you as keepsakes. And brothers and sisters, I invite you to find an act of congregational welcoming at the top of page, I mean, I'm sorry, in the middle of page 43. Members of the household of God, I commend this child to your love and care. Do all in your power to increase his faith, confirm his hope, and perfect him in love. We give, we give thanks, thanks for all that God, God has already given you, you and, and we, we welcome you with Christian love. As, as members, members together with you in the body of Christ and in this congregation of the United Methodist Church, we, we renew, renew our covenant faithfully to participate in the ministries of the church by our prayers, our presence, our gifts, our service, and our witness that in everything God may be glorified through Jesus Christ. Friends, the God of all grace has called us to eternal glory in Christ, establish you and strengthen you by the Holy Spirit that you may live in grace and peace. Amen. Amen. Congratulations. Good job. Today's Old Testament reading comes from Joshua 24, verses 1 through 3 and 14 through 25. This is a fairly long scripture reading, so I encourage you to go ahead and get comfortable. And if you would like to follow along, Joshua is found in the middle of the Old Testament in your pew Bibles. It's on page 215. Joshua 24, starting with verse 1, says... Then Joshua gathered all the tribes of Israel to Shechem and summoned the elders, the heads, the judges, the officers of Israel, and they presented themselves before God. And Joshua said to all the people, Thus says the Lord, the God of Israel, Long ago your ancestors, Terah and his sons, Abraham and Nahor, lived beyond the Euphrates and served other gods. Then I took your father Abraham from beyond the river 
and led him through all the land of Canaan and made his offspring many. I gave him Isaac, and to Isaac I gave Jacob and Esau. Moving along down to verse 14. Verse 14 says, Now therefore revere the Lord and serve him in sincerity and in faithfulness. Put away the gods of your ancestors, served beyond the river and in Egypt, and serve the Lord. Now if you are unwilling to serve the Lord, choose this day whom you will serve, whether the gods of your ancestors served in the region beyond the river or the gods of the Amorites in whose land you are now living. But as for me and my household, we will serve the Lord. Then the people answered, Far be it from us that we should forsake the Lord to serve other gods. For it is the Lord our God who brought us and our ancestors up from the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery, and who did those great signs in our sight. He protected us along all the way that we went, and among all the peoples through whom we passed. And the Lord drove out before us all the peoples, the Amorites who lived in the land. Therefore, we also will serve the Lord, for he is our God. But Joshua said to the people, You cannot serve the Lord, for he is a holy God. He is a jealous God. He will not forgive your transgressions or your sins. If you forsake the Lord and serve foreign gods, then he will turn and do harm and consume you after having done you good. And the people said to Joshua, No, we will serve the Lord. Then Joshua said to the people, You are witnesses against yourselves that you have chosen the Lord to serve him. And they said, We are witnesses. He said, Then put away the foreign gods that are among you, and incline your hearts to the Lord, the God of Israel. The people said to Joshua, The Lord our God we will serve, and him we will obey. So Joshua made a covenant with the people that day and made statutes and ordinances for them at Shechem. The word of the Lord.
The epistle lesson this morning is from 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, The Coming of the Lord. But we do not want you to be uninformed, brothers and sisters, about those who have died, so that you may not grieve as others do who have no hope. For since we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so, through Jesus, God will bring with him those who have died. For this we declare to you by the word of the Lord, that we who are alive, who are left until the coming of the Lord, will by no means precede those who have died. For the Lord himself, with a cry of command, with the archangel's call, and with the sound of God's trumpet, will descend from heaven, and the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we who are alive, who are left, will be caught up in the clouds together with them to meet the Lord in the air, and so we will be with the Lord forever. Therefore, encourage one another with these words. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our act of praise this morning is from Psalm 78. You'll find it in selection 799 in your hymnal. I invite you to stand as you are able. <clears throat> Give ear, O my people, to my teaching. Incline your ears to the words of my mouth. Things that we have heard and known that our forebearers have told us. Ephraimites, armed with the bow, turned back on the day of battle. They forgot the deeds of the Lord, the miracles that God had shown them. The Lord divided the sea and let them pass through it and made the waters stand like a heap. Cleft rocks in the wilderness and gave them drink abundantly as from the deep. Yet they sinned still more against God, rebelling against the Most High in the desert. They tested God in their heart by demanding the food they craved. They spoke against God, saying, They did not believe in his wonders, so God made their days like a breath. 
turn their years into terror. They remembered that God was their rock, the most high God, their redeemer. Their heart was not steadfast toward God. They were not true to God's covenant. Except for our children, I'll invite you all to come down for children's time with Miss Brandy. Good morning. Well, as we're getting close to Thanksgiving, I've been thinking even more about being thankful. So when someone does something nice for you, what do you do? Good morning. What do you do when someone does something thankful or something nice for you? What do you do? Porter. Say thank you. That's right. And I, let, I bet sometimes your mom even um, will ask you to do what? Go a step further and write a what? A letter, a thank you note, that's right. Another way you can show, like if somebody invites you over to your house <clears throat> to, for a spend the night party, maybe you'll, you'll, do, you'll write a thank you note and then you'll invite them back over in return to show, you know, just to reciprocate that act of, of thankfulness. But there is no one that has done more for us to be thankful for than God has, has he? God provides everything we need for us. He heals us, he's our comforter, he's our provider, and the Bible says that he's our ever-present helper in times of trouble. And because God has done all this for us, we, have, we, can, we say thank you to him. And Jesus tells us how to do it. He says, whatever you do for one of the least of these brothers of mine, you do it for me. That means when we visit someone who's sick, it's the same as doing it for Jesus. When we give clothes to those who are in need, it's the same as doing it for Jesus. In October, we had that coat drive that the children did. We collected 26 coats to give to children in Florence. And there's a special name that I found to say thank you, and it's called Thanks Living. Can you say that with me? Thanks Living? That's right. Thanks Living is when you show your thanks by the way you live. It's when you look at the many ways God's blessed us. And we thank him by sharing those blessings with others. So you can think about how you can help others by the way that you're thanking God for what he has given us. So, for example, you, if you have not filled an Operation Christmas Child box, those are due this Thursday. You can grab one of those going out of the commons. They're on the bookshelf this week. Those are due on Thursday. And I have thank you notes, and you can write God a thank you note of all the things that he's done for you, or just uh, not all the things that won't fit on here, but a couple of the things that you're thankful for that God has blessed you with, and keep it, and remind, keep it at your house, and, and put it in a place that you can remember, okay? So I'll pass those out before we go. So let's pray and um, thank God. Dear God, we come into your presence with thanksgiving. Help us turn our thanksgiving into thanks living. Help us notice people around us who are in need and ways we can take care of them. 
like you care for us. In Jesus' name, amen. Please be seated. Our gospel lesson is from the gospel according to Matthew, the 25th chapter, verses 1 through 13. Hear now the word of God. Then the kingdom of heaven will be like this. Ten bridesmaids took their lamps and went to meet the bridegroom. Five of them were foolish and five were wise. When the foolish took their lamps, they took no oil with them. But the wise took flasks of oil with their lamps. As the bridegroom was delayed, all of them became drowsy and slept. But at midnight there was a shout, Look, here is the bridegroom, come out to meet him. Then all the bridesmaids got up and trimmed their lamps. The foolish said to the wise, Give us some of your oil, for our lamps are going out. But the wise replied, No, there will not be enough for you and for us. You had better go to the dealers and buy some for yourselves. And while they went to buy it, the bridegroom came, and those who were ready went with him into the wedding banquet, and the door was shut. Later the other bridesmaids came also, saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. But he replied, Truly I tell you, I do not know you. Keep awake, therefore, for you know neither the hour nor the day. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The early church had a problem. At his ascension, Jesus said to the disciples that he would return. And the early church, the first Christians, they assumed that to be a matter of days, weeks at most. But time wore on and Jesus didn't return. And some of them began to doubt. Maybe they misunderstood Jesus. But I wonder, these were the same people who knew for a certainty that Jesus was dead and then encountered the resurrected Christ and had their lives changed as a result. Surely, I think they must have asked themselves, maybe we just misunderstood. He will certainly be back, but obviously it's not going to be soon. That seems to be the kind of thing that Matthew is telling us, that Jesus is telling us through Matthew in this parable, that the return using the bridegroom as, uh, an, as a stand-in for Jesus, that the return is certain. We might not know when, 
It might not be on the time frame we plan, but it will happen. We're reminded that Jesus began a work while he was on earth, the work of God's kingdom. And that though Jesus has returned to heaven, he's empowered us by the presence of the Holy Spirit to continue that kingdom work until he returns. Jesus, we can rest assured, will return and finish the work he began. But in the meantime, it's up to us to remain in process. God is drawing us. God is drawing all of creation toward a new reality. We call that coming future reality the kingdom of God. But when we do the work of the kingdom of God here and now, in our community, in our world, the kingdom of God breaks into our present. And we do kingdom work. This morning we've celebrated kingdom work. We heard from our Stephen ministry who advances the kingdom of God by helping people being a Christian friend when they're going through a difficult time. We advance the kingdom through our beds ministry, the building for which we will dedicate here in a moment. We honor the two people today as a way to lift up not just what they do, but remind us of all the things that Central does through our outreach ministries. We baptize little George. Today we have seen the kingdom of God in this place among these people. We see it. We celebrate in it. We participate in it. And eventually, the kingdom of God will come to full fruition when Jesus returns. That is what God is drawing creation toward. But until that happens, we're to continue to do the work of the kingdom, to be watchful, to be ready, not just to celebrate and welcome the Savior when He returns in person, but to be watchful for where the kingdom of God is breaking out around us and join God in that work. Maybe that notion of Jesus' return is frightening for you. But it doesn't need to be, nor should it be. It's a joyous thing because it tells us what's the next big thing in God's plan for creation, which is God is going to fix all this. And if you don't know what all this is, just look at the news. Jesus is going to return. Wrongs will be righted. A perfect new creation will come into being. But in the meantime, we watch, we're ready, and we join God in continuing to do the kingdom of work here and now. So as we continue to watch for the kingdom, let us do the work of the kingdom and be prepared for God's next big thing. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, we believe that we are prepared for your coming reign. We pray for the coming of the kingdom as a matter of course, almost forgetting the meaning of the words. And so when we get discouraged or stressed, when the world seems particularly dark, we admit that it is sometimes tempting to give into the darkness because we forget that although your reign is certain, the timing is not for us to know. So we ask that you help us, O oh Lord, help us to continue to have the kind of hope that rests in you, not in ourselves. Help us to experience the kind of joy that is not based in this world but in the kingdom to come. And we ask for your help in trusting you completely. We ask for the will to remain focused on you so that we might set aside the world's distractions in order to be fully prepared to dwell in you. Lord, we pray for those who do not have this certainty yet, for those whose days, because of grief or violence or illness, or need or long and dark for those whose sufferings seem insurmountable 
Help us be as the bridesmaids to shine the light in their darkness. So bless our efforts to serve you and to serve one another. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Now as we commit our selves, our gifts to God's service, I'll invite our ushers to come forward for the offering. Father, we are so grateful for the many blessings you have given us, and we return to you what is yours. Ask that you bless these gifts in your service. In Christ's name we pray, amen. Friends, following our, our last hymn, um, rather than receive you at the doors, which we love to do, Meg and I will be running across the street for that dedication service, and we encourage you to, to come there and be part of that. But if you would now receive the benediction. May the love of God, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the communion of the Holy Spirit 
be with you now and forevermore. Amen. Amen.